feeling inside I'm not one of those who can easily hide I don't have much money But boy, if I did I'd buy a big house where we both could live Any other questions, I'll hand it off to Nick. And then um, once you finish that, we can start going to the CTF portion. If the discussion is good, as it has been the last few months with our conversation with Nick, then we'll just slide the CTF back um, into our next session. So you'll definitely get the benefit of it, even if it's today or our next session. Okay? Don't everybody talk at once. <laughs> They're on LinkedIn now. Slow so down, slow down. I can't hear everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Okay. So I'll open it up to you guys. I know you guys had a little bit of time to mull over some stuff. I did get some questions through email, uh, and hopefully I had those got answered. If they did not, let me know. Uh, and if I miss you, let me know too. Uh, my personal email is much more difficult to keep track of than my work email because usually it gets ignored on my phone, as bad as that is to say. Um, I'm also involved with quite a few organizations, and it's actually been a struggle to focus on their emails. Um, so I guess I'll open it up to you guys. Did you guys have any questions in general on the sock puppet stuff or creation? You know, you guys can talk about things that you guys did, didn't do, couldn't get in. You know, I'll open it up for anything regarding sock puppets. All right, so yeah, I got a question regarding sock puppets. So we 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 uh, communicated back and forth about them, and I have another question regarding if you have to do authentication with a cell phone, do you have to create an account on the phone for the same account the sock puppet is, or what's the method best method about that? Good question. Um, so typically, I will yes. So I usually use the sock puppet's name you know, name, email, everything else uh, to actually do that. You can have like one singular sock puppet or sock puppet account. Uh, I've done that on some other phones too. And remember when I talked about kind of how all this stuff ties together, you really got to consider, you know, what, what are you actually trying to accomplish with this account? So if you went through kind of all the steps that we did last time, and again, I know that there's, there's a lot more to sock puppetry, um, you know, even, even covering keeping your sock puppets organized to show a where they are, B what they're for, C are they, you know, probing a threat actor. But I can tell you in in general, it really depends on how, you know, how locked down. If memory serves me correct, I know I talked about the, you know, how to make the ultimate sock puppet, which is where you go buy a PC off, you know, with cash from somebody you don't know, you know, through like a Craigslist or Facebook, don't even change the laptop or PC at all. And then you basically put it into a Faraday bag and turn it off, walk into a Starbucks, fire that guy up, you know, then you start creating your sock puppets from that account and through Starbucks. So I can tell you that, is that all a hassle? Absolutely. But sometimes it dictates to do that, especially with some of the threat actors that you, you know, you interact with. Um, but I can tell you for most of the stuff, you're just poking around and in general, you know, digging through stuff. Uh, the simple answer is, I can tell you at the last two that I had to fire up my phone for outside of the, what I call the clean sock puppet accounts. Uh, I know I've said this before, I'm a very lazy individual uh, and I have a process that I use on my phone with Mint Mobile. And I always just log back in with the same, you know, with the same Google account. Now that Google account's not tied to me at all. It's just tied to my sock puppet. But the only reason I use that one is because if you guys remember last time, you know, you, you can create, you can start on that mail.com account and then move over to a Gmail account, but there's more tracking involved. So sometimes it's a benefit and I know I'm, I'm throwing a whole bunch of what ifs at you guys again, but you don't necessarily always want to get a Gmail account if you want to not be tracked or want to really remain somewhat anonymous. If you go into the Gmail route and then you put it onto a phone or, you know, everything else, they can actually, and they will track you that way. Um, 
So for example, like if you log into that Gmail account, and you're not thinking on your home computer, boom, that's a point of contact that you just got locked into. So more often than not, I can tell you, I, I don't have for most of those accounts. I really don't keep, you know, the, and that's what we call operational security or OPSEC. I really don't pay attention to that because like I told you guys, if you go into poking the bear, that's when you can get into some trouble. So, you know, you don't really want to go that route. Um, and there's services out there, you know, you guys are looking for stuff for your own companies There's services out there that'll do that for you, which is, I, I really do recommend that more than you actually going out and doing the work yourself. Does that make sense? So I, I guess if I had to put into one in one sentence is it really depends. It's probably the best, you know, best habit to do to get yourself into, uh, but it's not necessarily necessary. Uh, especially if you didn't choose to put that sock puppet account to uh, to Gmail. That answer your question, Ernest, hopefully. Yeah, I think that clears us up. I mean, from what I can understand, I mean, so if you're doing real in-depth research and potentially may get involved with some um, characters that you won't want to mention, you need to have a clean phone and all that stuff, basically, right? Correct. Correct. I mean, that that would be, well, I mean, you don't necessarily have to have a clean, you know, quote unquote, clean phone. Um, I would say a factory reset phone. Uh, and then what I typically do is I just, after every time I use it, I factory reset it. And then I pop out the SIM card, pop a new one in. So I don't necessarily need a new phone every time, but you just have to have good cleanliness. You know, and th and that's really if you're trying to get one that's completely, you know, we're talking tinfoil hat, you know, computer from Starbucks, that kind of stuff. That's really the only time you really need to worry about that from what I've seen. Uh, I can tell you that the, well, up until about this last week, uh, has anyone tried to make a sock puppet for Facebook in the last week? Maybe not. So I tried to make 10 accounts and all my 10 got immediately destroyed. Uh, and I have a strong suspicion it's probably because of what happened with the Senate hearing and Facebook. Facebook's being held liable uh, for some of the things that they're doing. Um, and that inc includes a good, you know, good account maturation and actually going through and determining if accounts good or bad. Uh, so some of my accounts got completely uh, pegged. But if you guys run into that, let me know. Uh, if you guys have stuff to where you got past it, like you used a VPN, didn't use a VPN, you know, went to Starbucks. I, I haven't done that yet. I got to go to Starbucks or or Target and try that. Um, but I did this all from my home and through VPN. It was just very, very unsuccessful. Like typically out of 10, I can at least get three or four. And I got zero, a giant fat zero. So did they ask for a cell phone authentication or they asked for, they just blocked you completely? So I got through the cell phone on two of them. And then as soon as I got done, it flagged my account for review which is never a good sign. <laughs> uh, I know LinkedIn does that too. And LinkedIn will request like a driver's license or some type of, you know, state ID. We're going to take the front and back of your, your photo. I don't know if you guys have ever done that before. Um, there's even some services out there that are social media services that have been going to that. Uh, and I believe there's even, there's a few sites that'll actually use like, I forgot why they, how they tout it, but they, they do something like guaranteed identity. Almost like how uh, you can authenticate with Google or Facebook on other, you know, on other uh, websites, but not not as, you know, it's more in depth than that. Like they kind of do the, the driver's license and all the rest of the stuff to make sure that they say, you are who you say you are. But yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. That was uh, it was not a fun day. I know I uh, I can also say that my home IP, is has been on the blacklist with Akamai for a little bit too. Uh, I have been penetration testing our, you know, our website pretty heavily. And I've also been working with, uh, another good friend of mine to, uh, help, help them out on another effort. Um, so I'm sure that that's probably why I'm getting flagged too. My IP most likely has a negative attribution at this point. And that, that, that could be it too. I didn't check that, but, um, yeah. So let me know if you guys, if you guys are successful making some accounts or if you guys have struggles or, you know, went through struggles and figured it out, let me know. I'd be interested to see what you guys get. And so last thing regarding the cell phone accounts. So 
once you get a phone number, is it okay? Is it, I guess, is it a bad idea to use that number to authenticate multiple user accounts or like if you're doing Facebook accounts and you got the same number, it's probably going to flag it, right? hundred percent. So if you use the same number into a Facebook account, it will automatically flag you. It says the number's already occupied by another account. Uh, I have not really seen, and actually I think I tried that too. I tried that last time even knowing it would flag the account, but I wanted to see what it would do to my good account. And it did nothing to my good account, and I assume that's because I curate that account. And what curate means is I'm on that account at least once or twice a day. That's the account that I use to search. Um, so I've, I've assumed that that's probably why it hasn't been flagged is it looks like a normal user. I interact with other people. I've friended people. I'm in groups. Um, but I've yet to, you know, to go that extra mile on there. I mean, I do use the, the phone number on there for two factor as well. So that might also be, you know, they could have looked at the, the attacking person, especially that I tried to do this on like the seventh or eighth person. They could have just looked at it. Like someone's trying to do bulk, you know, bulk account creation. Uh, I know I've seen that before on some other sites, but it typically won't work. All right, so let me ask a question out here. So has anyone had any success in creating a person of color from that um, digital AI um, interface, like people people creation process? I have. Um, I think the one that I have is a Hispanic male. But I don't know if that's what you meant by. Are you, are you more talking about like uh, the color black, or are you re referencing like a specific race? Well, Hispanic, black, I mean brown. Like I haven't really been able to create anybody other than a person with a pale complexion. That's interesting. I yeah, because I've I, I not saw, ran across that. And you said for the the picture or the name generation one. Um, the artificial AI. Oh, the AI. So the I saw some Hispanics. I, I don't. Remember seeing black, but I do remember seeing Hispanic and Indian. Um, that's interesting. You know what? Yeah. Let's look at that really quick. Um, I just gave it a quick run and got lucky on number two, but that's not exactly scientific here. No, I mean these the those those pictures are completely random. Like they they do not. There's no there's no rhyme or reason when they look through this stuff. That's what I was thinking, but I just had. I just kept coming up with nobody that I was kind of trying to picture, but I guess you got lucky. No, you know, that that's an interesting one too, because I'm not, you know, not that I want to make this into a race card, but I'd be curious to see how often, you know, just from my own stuff, how often they reject, you know, people of color versus, you know, like white, white versus Oriental. I would assume that they, you know, they shouldn't really be flagging things like that, but if they were doing that, that tells me that they're doing some type of facial recognition. So I know, and, and I'm not an expert in this too. So if someone is on here, you know, much more of an expert in facial recognition, you are more than welcome to punch holes through everything I'm about to say. Um, but I know that people of color with darker skin are typically harder to do facial recognition if you don't have depth to the face or shadows. So I'm wondering if some of these sites use that type of a, uh, uh, of an identifier, because I know Facebook's been, they've talked about that. And I know that was one of the topics that they brought up for personalized information because they were weaponizing. Like I said to you guys last time, if you're not paying for a site, you know, or paying for the service to use the site, then they're making money off you and your data. So I wonder if that's actually what's going on. That'd be an interesting thing to look at. Let's see if we can get... Hmm. Let's see. I think you definitely get more diversity than than I've previously gotten. 
I don't I don't think there's a rhyme or reason how this thing loads. I guess this might be potentially Indian or Hispanic. It's hard to tell. This one might work. Let's download, let's take that one and we'll keep going. It's a darker skin. So what you're searching for that, Nick. Uh, so what do you recommend? You, you you briefly talked about logging onto account like once or twice a week to, to keep from, you know, being flagged to, to act like a normal user. When you create like those, if those 10 accounts were created, how much time do you spend as far as trying <laughs> to act like a regular user? Because say if you spend an hour on each one of them, that's your entire day, right? Yep. So in, in the beginning, I typically spend about that much time getting them prepped and ready so they can initially flagged. Uh, but I can tell you, I typically only keep anywhere from five to eight, typically in my stable. Um, I've been doing a lot of work with my LP and ORC teams, and I have a, a pretty good influx to get them accounts just because it's easier for me to create them for them. Um, so a lot of times, you know, for me, I only have, you know, maybe you know, five or six that are up there. I can say out of the, I have, I think I have seven, seven still right now. And I believe out of the seven, three are pretty fresh and four have been, have been rotated in Facebook pretty well to where the, you know, they're, they're pretty solid. They haven't gotten flagged. Um, out of those four, uh, everybody is in Twitter. Everyone's in Instagram. And of those four, two are in LinkedIn. The other two are flagged. And I got another question too. Is there any way to like um to set up a credit card that just that's not tied to a, a person? Like can it be tied to one of these sock puppets? Yeah, for sure. Um, so that would just entail you going to like a uh, grocery store or something similar there. Uh, now, obviously, we can talk about, yeah, they can trace it back to the sale and all that stuff. So there's that to consider. Um, if you're going to do that, typically asking like a friend or someone else, you know, or even an anonymous person uh, to, to kind of go and do that, that's usually your best shot. But by paying for cash for a type of credit card, that is your best shot in doing that. What is around that dude's neck? I don't know what the heck that is. It might just be artifacts, right? Like they're not always perfect. I mean, it could be, but this looks like uh, some type of reptile or something. I don't know. It's weird. So I put in the chat a um, um, a website that you can get virtual credit cards. Uh, I think this one looks more Indian than, than actually black to me. Um, you know, I guess we'll save it and see. Or. I mean, I will say one thing. I'm very surprised. I never paid attention to that before because I'm not seeing the, you know, even like a black male. Uh, this is olive skin. There we go. I don't know how many clicks I had, but that was a lot. It's about 50. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's bananas, man. I, I never paid attention to that before. Good call. Good call.
So any other questions while while we're going through this as well? Anything else, Ernest? I think that was you to ask the last question. I'm good at the moment, but I'm sure I'll figure out something. <clears throat> okay. Ernest is gonna start sending anonymous package packages to Otha's house. <laughs> If I did, that'd be well worth his while. <laughs> Putting the pillows in the package, right? <laughs> Fingers. <laughs> so, and I know we've we've talked about um, Facebook and we talked about LinkedIn as well. And um, I haven't tried to create one with LinkedIn, so maybe that that'll be my next task is to create a more professional uh, LinkedIn profile just to just to see that. Um, I have a a couple of Twitter accounts, and th that seemed easy to be to to set up versus the um, setting up stuff for Facebook and, and LinkedIn. So regarding the virtual credit cards, you transfer money um, like via like your bank account, something like that, or how does that work? No, you know, I mean I've, you just I've use never cash. Used that. Just use cash. Yeah, you can use the cash. So I, someone else told me about that, and I just wanted to share it with the group. So use at your own risk. It seems reputable, but most sites look reputable, right? Um, but there's another guy named Heath Adams. That's where I got it from him. And he's he's pretty reputable as far as a engineer. He's uh, known as a cyber mentor. Um, on uh, YouTube, so uh, I was looking at a presentation for him, and he was talking about using virtual credit cards. So he uses it. So, um, thanks a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> so apparently, someone's already called this out already. Interesting. I'll have to do more research on that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's a way to force the color out of uh, out of this person does not exist. I mean, the other option you can do is kind of what they do. I mean, it's an AI generated photo. Uh, you could potentially take a photo and modify it enough to make it unique uh, to where it does not get you know, reversed into something else. Um, that's some other possibility as well. Like you can change eye color, you can slightly change or slightly, uh, you know, obfuscate the hair. Um, you can lengthen the the jaw, but that's interesting. I'm gonna have to, oh, look, I'll look into that. I don't know. That was a good call, man. I would have never thought about that as uh, in that context. Because I know this this particular site is very female heavy as well. But I don't think I've seen one one person of um, you know that that ethnicity on here. Oh man, yeah. Look at that. So once you create your sock puppet, that's the identity that you use to start doing your investigations from a retail perspective, right? Um, and and you mentioned about having your own separate laptop that you do your OSINT and stuff for your research on. Um, are there are there any other things from just a lab or, or perspective that that you use? Um, I mean, yeah, there's a couple things I can show you guys. I can go through kind of what I use, uh, but it's all virtualized. 
Okay. I mean, I either use uh, tr the Trace Labs virtual machine if you guys are familiar with that, um, but they're all they're all based on Kali Linux, um, or you can use Kali Linux. And usually, what I'll do is I'll work off a snapshot. So if you look on here, I have Kali Base. This is one that I just recently reloaded. Um, but I will actually take snapshots of these before I go do them. And then typically what I'll do is I'll revert back to snapshot. So, for example, I mean, if I was going to go dive after, dig after someone, and again, you, you still want to be careful with um, coming out of your same IP address as well, too. So typically, well, here, let's try and make another one. Does anyone have any questions on making a sock puppet account before I kind of blast off into oblivion here? Yes, no, maybe so. All right, so I'm going to take... Right, so last thing, so the key to not get flagged is either use a VPN or be at a coffee shop or something like that. Is that what kind of one of the, the best ways to prevent yourself from getting flagged? I mean, it was. It was until last week. <laughs> um, I can tell you it's more art form than anything. Uh, I I have not really found a, you know, like if you do this, it happens all the time. I have not found that. Um, so I, I personally would say stick with some type of, you know, Hey, this is what works for me. Um, and then once it stops working, start tweaking, you know, tweaking one way or another. Um, but yeah, I, I have not found a way that is, is guaranteed each way. Hobbit? What is a Hobbit? Okay. Another thing too, Nick, I got to ask this. So regarding the, the 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 IDs you generate, I mean, the picture should kind of mimic the person you, the picture and, and I guess occupation should kind of mimic the way the person looks to some extent. Uh, you can, uh, but I mean, typically, I mean, it really varies. Uh, I, I found that, and I don't remember if I told you this guys or not, or not because it was so long ago, but Typically, someone in their 20s, whether it's male or female, um, and I will say as long as they're not, you know, like incredibly attractive, you typically fly under the radar. Uh, they usually get left alone, usually very, you know, very robust. Uh, but I can tell you if you go on opposite ends of the spectrum, you'll get kind of weird. Like I have female sock puppets on on uh, on Twitter that get some pretty inappropriate things said to me through DMs. So, I mean, there's that, but for the most part, I would say if you're just looking to get a sock puppet to, to mess around with, I would say mid twenties, mid thirties, that typically gets you the best bang for your buck and doesn't get flagged all that often. Oh, this one's 67. I'll have to change that. Just need a year.
let's see, traffic lights. Traffic light. Hmm. There we go. So, Nick, one of the things you, you mentioned about the Trace Labs VM and um, before. Now, is there any reason why you're using NAT VM versus um, um, Michael was Basil's VM? I forgot the name, Biscardi or whatever they call it. Uh, no, I mean you can use that one too. Uh, I I know the Trace Labs one is just curated, and I know all the tools that it has on there. Okay. Uh, Michael Bazell is kind of a fan of not having if if you have something you continually go to, it's more curated. Like a lot of the stuff that he used to give in his books, um, it was not curated well. Meaning, uh, after some time, you know, some stuff dropped off or some tools, and people got mad at him. So that's when he stopped kind of including it. Uh, and I believe the la in his last iteration of the book, he was you know more of the mindset of find some you know some vm or something that works for you and figure out how to make it good for you is is kind of a the theme i got from him okay all right so this is fully up uh lamb t done mail.com and let's see if we get flagged and we're going to use a different browser Here. Uh, and we'll see if we get tagged. Let's see. Donna. The other thing I've often wondered too is I've wondered if Facebook does typing, um, like if you're inputting everything and just copying and pasting. I wonder if that's another avenue for it to flag you, because I know if it doesn't look like a human, doesn't smell like a human, they can block it and put it as a bot. So I'm wondering if that might be some of the dynamic that's going on here too, because I copy and paste a lot. Email. All right, let's see. Charge for me, or did I mess up? Invert. Mm. 
Yeah, it's already it's already flagging me. I don't know what it's not liking here. <laughs> Loves me. Now, do you typically go through the review process when, like, when your other accounts got flagged, or? Yeah, I mean, I do. I mean, I've never. I'll be honest, I've never gotten one back. I've even gone so far as actually emailing them to try and converse with someone on the other end of Facebook. They just have no. Uh, they don't have any. Any uh, any patience for any of that? I can tell you that I've never had someone respond back. I've had some mild things from this, but I need one that takes in what I need. I need the online number. I'm going to step away for one moment. Yeah, there's no way that I see this working. I'm pretty sure my IP address is just hosed. Um, I don't believe I'm still on that one. Yeah, that's the that should be Nord. Excuse me. So, Nick. Yeah. For the disposable sims, do you use your sock puppet account to set those up, or you use a different account for those? Uh, like, like I said, the, the, or things like that. The same. The same applies. Like if you're signing up for uh, the Google Play Store or iCloud, it really depends. If I have like the the Google Play Store requires, I believe it requires a Gmail account, so you have to have a Gmail account. So I don't always put Gmail accounts to my sock puppets. Um, you know, if you, if you want to, if you want to try it, I, you know, go for it. Um, but again, it just, it varies, it varies by use. Like if you're really trying to go more anonymous, then absolutely. Then you probably want to put everything towards your sock puppet and make it as, you know, as, as realistic as possible. Uh, and then kind of go from there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm getting uh, my IP is definitely flagged. I guarantee I'm pegged. Let's see. You know what? Let's try it with this. Because the other thing we can do. So this is the other reason why I like mail.com.
Now, Nick, why, why are you doing this? Uh, what's your take on the things that happened to FireEye today? Oh, man, um, not good. So do you guys, for those on the phone, or I guess through the web call, do you guys know what happened with FireEye today? Is anyone familiar with it? They got hacked, right? Yep, you're correct. They get hacked, and some of the tools were um, stolen as well. Um, so um, I know the stock supposedly uh, dropped. I should have shorted it, but um, I wasn't thinking. But yeah, they they got compromised, and so someone told me once. I think it was Joe McCray or somebody that when you are a security company, you know you're you you have that target on your back. And I know at Cisco, they always tell us about how many attempted breaches and attacks that we have from people just trying to uh, to get in. So um, it's definitely something that you have to to think about, even when you know your company as well, because some people think, oh well, I don't have the information that people want to hack, particularly you know like law offices and doctor offices and things of that nature. But uh, that information is pretty. Um, valuable to to get uh sorry i dropped off oh i think i was talking my uh my vpn was connecting oh, okay what's this thing doing doesn't work with internet explorer <laughs> so good <laughs> oh is internet explorer completely deprecated now oh man all right then um, but yeah, um, I don't, I don't, I didn't hear. Did, did you guys talk about what actually happened? No, uh, I didn't talk about, I just saw the kind of like the headlines and was thinking about, I should have shorted to stock, but, um, I didn't see what happened. I didn't read the details of it other than that is nation state that they think it was the Russians. Um, And it remind me of stuff that happened with the, I guess, hacking team or whatever back in the day. Yeah, this one for me is particularly scary. Um, I don't know how many how many people on the on the call actually. Or actually I keep on the call. How many people on the the meeting work in the cybersecurity industry? I, mean, I don't know. So as Otha was kind of saying, you know, this is the company that kind of gets you out of hot water. This is like the, the company that people from three letter agencies call, you know, fortune 50, fortune 100, fortune 500. When you get breached, this is the, these are the guys that you call. So the reason why this is concerning is, is partly for that is that they were, they were blatantly hacked, but they are, first of all, they've not been very open on how, how it happened but they have been very, very upfront of, it is not something that is a known or a normal, uh, or I should say a normal exposed vulnerability. They use something either entirely new or some new tactic. And that is what scares the living God out of me because if they're able to get it out of Mandiant, uh, it's, it's not really a step away from going to the US government, you know, or trying to get into the NSA and go after their tools. So the stuff that was actually stolen uh, and this is all that they've really publicly said so far, other than the breach. But they said that they were uh, their their actual penetration testing tools were pilfered. So what they actually went ahead and did uh, for all those that are curious about what tools they had, but there's actually uh, email cannot be your password. All right, I'll come back to that. But um, they actually released uh, tool GitHub. They released the Yara rules for their uh, toolbox, so this is actually all of the all of their tools. So if you if you want to take a look at some of the stuff that's on there, I can throw this link in there. But even some of the tools and the you know that they have, and they obviously don't use this for you know nation state hacking, and they don't go out and hack companies. You know that's not what the purpose of this toolbox is. But the purpose of this toolbox because they're you know, what I would consider a tier one style shop, you know, this is what they'll use when they're doing their own penetration testing, when they get put under what they call an SOW or a statement of work, where a company will hire them and say, I want you to hack me, or I want you to get in, I want you to pen test. 
and they pull out this toolbox of all their tools that they know that are kind of, you know, quote unquote, cutting edge to do that because this is all the current stuff that all the major APT groups are doing, all the major hacking groups. You know, this this is a it's a pretty good it's a pretty good list of of stuff. But you know, with that being said, they actually created some YAR rules, snort rules, and I'm not all that familiar with what clam rules are. Uh, it's not something I've ever looked at before, but uh, even with YAR the rules, they actually gave a detection. So if you guys have, or if you live and breathe in the cybersecurity side, I know this probably looks like gibberish to most of you guys. It looks like gibberish to me too, even though I understand reading it, but these are basically detections like this is a rule for their hack tool, M MSIL Rubius. You know, here's the MD Hive hash of it. And then, you know, they're looking for strings inside of the, inside of the machine. Uh, but there's rules for literally every single one of their tools. Uh, and I've been running that ever since they let this go today, which I think was roughly around, I think three o'clock. I mean, it might have been, might have been a little bit earlier. So five hours, what, 94, four hours, four hours ago. And this was seven hours ago. So two, two thirty. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, uh, in my opinion, this is a particularly damaging one. This is not a, this is not a good situation. Uh, especially, I mean, even even more so the fact, you know, Mandiant and FireEye being the the shop they are, yeah, I mean, you could attract the attention of, you know, an, a nation state actor, but typically these kind of companies are really left alone because there's, you know, outside of getting maybe some of the tools or, you know, some stuff out of there. I, I'm just, I, I guess, I'm more saying that because I'm wondering what else they got that we don't know about or that they don't even know about. Because if they're this technologically cap you know, capable of getting into a company like that, you know, there's no telling, uh, there's no telling on what other stuff they could have hid their tracks on. You know, maybe this was a complete diversionary tactic to go after the tools and they stole, you know, the other crown jewels that are underneath. Who knows? Um, but I know they're probably doing a, a very good forensic steep dive, and I have faith that they'll get that done and quickly. But uh, it's an interesting one. Yeah, the the only thing I saw that was interesting out of the art, one of the articles was that, um, and, and I don't think this was a non this was a non technical person wrote it, but it said they um, they created several thousand internet protocol addresses inside the United States to hide the attack. So that doesn't you know it, it just kind of shows you the length of how long um, somebody would actually do an attack. You know because we see this stuff on the news. Not on the news, but on, on TV and the movies, you know, somebody's trying to hack something and they do it in an hour or 10 to 15 minutes, right? But they don't show the process of someone doing the research, using OSINT, creating sock puppets, you know. Oh, look at that. The time. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off That's on the other right. screen. Look at uh, that. One for 12. <laughs> yeah, you're on a roll. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, you, did you guys see what I did? Did you guys see what I did? I know, uh, um, so what I ended up doing, part of mail.com is you can actually assign yourself some aliases. And this is something I've done in the past. So I kind of make up, they might be flagging it on mail.com just because they know it's kind of a, not that mail.com is not a bad or fake site. I mean, it's definitely email. Uh, I don't know that I would ever pass documents that I personally want to take care of through it uh, because I don't know who the heck runs mail.com uh, and the fact that they can basically, you know, sign up for free. They got to be doing something with it, but what I ended up doing inside of mail.com is they have an alias address. And what I did is I just created another account that goes directly to my original account that they didn't like. So when I've, I've used this tactic in the past, when I've gotten blocked, you know, it's just a pivoting tool. Um, but this just goes to show you, you know, how we talked about, there's no real right way to do this. This was something I did a shot in the dark and it is literally the same exact email address, but it's just with a different name. So I used, you know, I used that other, uh, that other woman's name. So we should have gotten an email by now from, whoops. Let's see, Facebook. So let's see if they flag us further. 20776. Continue. Sweet. So we got in. And because I wasn't even sure if this was going to work, I should probably record the first and last name. It was Candace Jones. Is that what it is? Yeah, Candace Jones. Candace Jones. Uh, ads. 
cybergal.com. Uh, what the heck do we do on this one? This one used Facebook. And then this is her birthday. Crap, we don't need. Uh, 1992, what is that? 8, 28, 28, is my math right? Eight, yeah, 28. Which is 28. So I'm going to use this photo. And I want to see what happens. So let's take this, upload a photo. So I, I don't mean to purposely be. Uh, skewing some, but I have some stuff from a client um, or from other things that I can't show. I have some data on here that I'm working for another group. Um, this one is two. Up. And let's find kitten picture. I don't think Candace Jones would have a picture of a cat. <laughs> well, we can we can flip it too. Here, we'll flip it. There's no uh, this cat does not exist. dot com. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's a good one. There should be. We should do. We'll do. We'll do double Candace. Be Candace here and Candace and back. Uh, let's see. By the way, that's a real site I just checked. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. It is so good. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Cover photo is public. Let's see, it changes. Let's see, we'll I'll put a different photo. Cat. Ooh, that looks like garbage. Let's pick another one. Banner photo get. All right, so there we go. Can we move this at all? Try and Or does that stay in the middle? I guess it stays in the middle. I guess it doesn't matter. So we got one. And we didn't have to do a phone number, which is even, that's pretty rare in itself too. So I'll go through and probably make this a little bit better later on. But so it just goes to show you, you know, some of the stuff is not, it's not a science. It's art, you know. Um, I would also probably say if you're going to go for LinkedIn, I have never been able to get a LinkedIn account once I've gotten into Facebook. Um, but I will say once I get into Facebook, it's not a far jump to go to Twitter. They typically won't flag you. And then let's get to sign up. Actually, I think you can log in. No, or maybe it's Instagram. I know one of these does. Instagram. So we're going to use the Facebook to use Candace. We'll do. Do 
this name is more than likely used. Now, when you typically create a, a profile for, you know, for a woman that's young, do you always use cats? I I like using cats just because I feel I don't get flagged as much. Like, uh, usually when you see, like, cats and dogs, you know that they're, like, a somewhat decent person, I guess, most of the time. <laughs> Except for the raging psychopaths that use that to cover there themselves. I don't know. Just do this. Let's connect. Why is this not working? Uh, oh, there we go. And like something. It doesn't like our password. Let's try. Well, I hate doing this, but I guess we'll recycle. Yeah, this is, I don't know if this page is broken or doesn't like the, I don't have any browser extensions. Let me try, let's try over here. It's weird. So uh, I also put in the chat, you know, I was, I was talking about the time that it takes to uh, compromise a company. So I put in the chat, a link to a guy named Phineas Fisher, who compromised a company called Hacking Team, and he has like a list of uh, uh, these manifestos that he does. Where he actually talked about the step-by-step -step process of what he actually does. So, the first one was something called Gamma Team, or, or I think it was Gamma Team, and the second was Hacking Team, or I may have the names confused, but uh, it's a link in the uh, the chat just to kind of go through to show you his thought process of what he actually does. Thing, a stupid thing. Let's try it. 
Ugh, that stupid edge. Still retain that edge is a uh, edge is a very finicky browser. Oh, well, that's weird. So usually when I get an Instagram right away, I will at least follow some, um, you know, people that are just famous. And then I'll usually come back. So we are now embedded in Instagram. And let's make sure I got the name right. Settings. So this is our username. Oops. Sean. Email that we used. Facebook. Did mm -hmm. two factors, so I think we're good with this one. So we can log out. I'll curate this one later, but that's that's how you pivot off. Uh, there's one thing I want to try tonight with you guys here too. So I know Twitter, you have to typically sign up with a phone. I want to see if we can use one of these to do it. Candace Jones. Let's email instead. January 8th, 92. I better go buy a lottery ticket. Yeah, I think it's time to go to the to the gas station and get some lottery tickets because I've never seen this happen. Copy. Oh, that's amazing. I've never seen that happen before. That's pretty good. But this easy? Yeah, I've I've always been stopped at Twitter with a phone number typically. So I'm wondering if they're just flagging more in the mail.com. I wonder if that's just the domain. They're looking at the domain. They want to review all the mail.com that comes in, especially if they can't do. So their their default might be mail.com and not an actual phone number. That could be what it is. That could absolutely be what it is. Ah, there's there's part one. 
Let's see. Pass a capture recheck. And verify your phone number. So I don't know what was going on with that browser. I don't know if you guys saw that, but the thing was like skipping. So I'm definitely not a robot. Let's give the good old want want. Yep, we're going to get stopped here unless I spin up. Uh, I'm not prepared to do that right now. I could, but it'll take me a couple minutes to get my phone up. But that kind of stinks. So I got to find out what happens in between this to Twitter. I'm getting verified. Hmm. Well, I guess we, par we partially got in. I'll have to get a phone number for later. Otherwise, it'll completely flag this account. Uh, I wonder if we could use... Let's see if there's another one. Maybe it works better. I have a feeling these are all going to get flagged or they're not going to be shown as real. Yeah. Aid. Yeah, this is this is more than likely going to cause this account to get flagged too, because I'm just dumping in phone numbers into it too. Uh, let's see, they've used it with Amazon, Amazon. So somebody signed up with Instagram with this TikTok, Apple ID. Hmm. Well, oh well. I mean, at least we got Facebook and Instagram. So hopefully these don't get flagged because of the Twitter one. But I might spin up a phone and just get one of these into here too and change the picture out. But um, questions on this from anyone? And you guys kind of see how I process through. I did, but let me recap a little bit. You 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 created an alias from your original mail.com account. Yep. Here I'll I'll run through it one more time. So when you're in mail.com, you can actually add an alias. So if you go to home and then go to alias address, I mean you can create I think you get up to 10 or 20, I don't remember, uh 10, 10 email addresses. So you can make one, you know, um Devin Jones. And then we can use now work mail, maybe let's do techie.com. Created, let's see if we can get this one to work in Twitter. Let me use edge, edge. So which domain did you choose? I can't really read it on my screen. 
Uh, techie.com. Whatever that means. Thanks. Thank you. Is that also a domain you got to work on Facebook as well, or was it something different? No, the one on Facebook was the CyberGal. Yeah, see this? There's something going on with this. See that? I'm wondering if that's a bad adverse reaction from Nord. Yeah, we got the same thing. So there's there's something I don't know. Did you guys see that? Maybe I, I don't know if you could see it really well. It might be small, but the the loading thing kept twitching, and then so did the loading icon on here. So there's something going on with whatever's checking with Twitter. And I, I if I had to make a guess, I'm guessing it's because of Nord. Nord is probably causing the issue with it. But like I said, my my IP has not been great. It's not been great lately. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, so to your point, yeah, I mean, uh, you can just try different things around. Um, like I said, there's, there's never, uh, there's, there's not a scientific method, meaning I can't give you steps one through 10 and it works every single time. Uh, they change as much as we change. Um, and I believe that, you know, if I was working on their teams as part of the cyber, you know, cyber team, I would try and think outside of the box and try and come up with creative ways to block me from doing exactly what I'm doing. So I'm sure that they're doing the same thing. Like these phone numbers, I guarantee, um, I guarantee they are probably going out to these sites, or they might have a, uh, an API that harvests them all, you know, to pull those back in. But I'm surprised they got into Facebook and Instagram. That's still a win, even though we couldn't get into Twitter. But uh, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it with that. That's what I was going to uh, ask if, if that's what they're doing with these um, received SMS numbers. But you, 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 you said exactly what I was going to say. Well, they're collecting all these available numbers that people could possibly use. I mean, that that's what I would do. I can tell you that that's what yeah. I would do. And I, I there. They have to have stringent ways of signing up. I mean, part, you know, part of all this garbage that's gone on and not that I want to turn this into a political debate or anything along those lines, or, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily need to know if you, you know, what side of the fence you stand on. Right. But I can tell you a lot of this has become uh, more in the open because of all the disinformation that's been going on. So this is one thing that I can tell you is probably going to get harder and harder and harder from a sock puppet type of view. And the reason I say it's going to get harder and harder and harder is because, you know, they're, they're using these accounts to spread false information or to lead a narrative that is not exactly, you know, correct to try and push the masses. So even though, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they, you know, they're vehemently against, you know, they, they don't want their platform used for that. Number one, number two is they don't use their platform for that. Uh, and I believe that part of the cracking down from all those, you know, Senate hearings and social media and everything else that's going on, if you guys have followed, you know, Twitter in any shape or form with uh, what's been going on with the presidency, but there's all of that going on there. And I think they've really tightened the noose because they're they're trying to, you know, limit limit the amount of garbage that gets onto their sites. So this is this is not unexpected behavior for me. And like I said, I mean, I had someone who's, you know, much, much smarter than me and much, you know, who's who's taught me a lot of things on OSINT. But he pretty much said as soon as one goes down or you're not able to get it in there, there's always going to be some other, you know, some other site that you can compromise or some other way. So uh, we just got to kind of poke around and play with it and play around with it until we get, you know, get a way to get into into these places. And again, I don't, you know. I say this too with, I don't intend on doing anything malicious, you know, but again, I don't, 
I don't want my persona and who I am as a person to go onto Twitter and interact with some of these people because even, even friending or, you know, green to look at their profile, that could be a potentially dangerous one too, especially if you're trying to do, you know, disinformation research or, or research on a militia group, you know, you never know the type of resources that might be out there in that, in that group. And that's where it gets a little bit scary because. You know, if they're all fired up and they're mad at certain things or whatever else, or they're they're a dangerous criminal organization, you know, even outside the election, I've seen criminal organizations on Facebook and Twitter that are doing sales, um, you know, sales for account takeover, sales for gift card, sales for credit card. You know, they're they're not exactly uh, very quiet about when they're selling and what they're selling. So, you know, those are the types of places where you're affecting their bottom line and their actual their income. You know, those are the ones that you got to be very careful for. And that's why it's never advised to use your own, you know, your own account. And typically when you get to there, that's also the reason why I tell you guys that you should use some other computer, you know, is, and just to point out too, like, even if we looked at using, you know, Kali Linux or the Trace Labs Kali Linux or even VMware, we're using a hosted VM inside of a computer. So it, it could possibly come back because remember with VMs, your memory is shared. You have shared hard drives typically if you're not saving on the same hard drive. Um, like this is all cordoned off. I have um, I have four different disks. Like these two are not on the same disk. And these, uh, actually I think I moved these off to the unsecured disk side too. Uh, but I, I cordon these things off in a fashion too. And then I also have a VM that's actually off of another part of my network that's segmented uh, using SOX5 proxies through VPN, that that's the one that I typically use when I go on the dark web. So I don't even use the dark web, so to speak, on here. I will log into another box, which is a Windows box, and then inside of that Windows box, I virtualize to uh, Kali Linux. So I'm virtualized, and then I'm virtualizing again. Uh, just because I want to cover my tracks and inside even the windows instance, I will fire up another instance in Nord. So I'm actually double VPN tunneled. And then once I get into Cali, I go in through Tor. So there's three layers there. So it makes it very, very difficult for someone to kind of backtrack and find out who I am. But that again, you know, you, you can't use like this, anything that's on my box. I don't ever use for recon unless I wipe it back to, you know, how I showed you guys with those snapshots. The snapshot is always a base image. It's it's not even been touched. It's just been loaded. That's all this has been. Same with this. I don't even know if I did a snapshot on this one. Yeah, I did. Um, I did a snapshot on this one. I did. So I actually followed my own my own advice. Um, but to that point, you know, just be just be conscious and cognitive. If if you really think that you should be on another computer doing what you're doing. Um, that should be a good signal to yourself that you should probably think about what you're doing, meaning you might want to, to put in a little bit more OPSEC. Uh, if that's a topic too, I know we're kind of running up on the, the end of the, the 10 o'clock hour here. Um, but if that's a, a topic of interest, you know, I can definitely cover some of that stuff too. And again, it's not, it's not meant to be in the context of, you know, <laughs> Nick's training you guys to be, you know, <laughs> The dirty hackers of the of the internet and planet, but I, you know, just to keep yourself safe, um, you know, it's a it's a good it's a good tool set to understand. Uh, I will also say I'm by no means an expert. Uh, it's just I've learned, you know, I've learned the hard way on the dark web because, you know, it's luckily for me it was just I had I had accounts flagged. I mean, I never really interacted with tons of people in the beginning, um, but when it came down to really doing that type of interaction. I uh, I hold my safety and my family's safety in high regard, and that's where I won't do certain things, you know, on the dark web anymore. I'll go to my service that we have that we pay for to do a lot of that stuff or to in it, you know, interface with those bad people. But like I said before, I mean, you're, could you bump into that one hacker that's just a pile of garbage and just wants to cause damage? Absolutely, uh, but more often than not. Uh, you know, most of the people that we see on the dark web, they're business people. They're they're running a business. You know, it's a shady, illegitimate business, but they want money and they want cash. So really, if you don't mess with their money flow, you know, I, I've asked some of these guys questions or just like, hey, how'd you get started? Or, you know, what do you do for this? Or how, you know, how do you handle some of this stuff? And 
you know, some have told me and they'd be like, well, I can, if you pay me, I'll train you. And I don't know if that's, you know, code for them to make sure I'm not a cop or you know, FBI or something like along those lines. I, I couldn't tell you. Um, but like I said, if, you, if you're going down that route and this stuff really interests you, that's when you're going to have to get a little bit more uh, worried about your actual operational security. But any uh, any questions? I'll kind of open up for you. I guess we don't have time to do any of that CTF. Yeah, CTF. This took a while. No, you know, no but this is great. We can um, pick that up uh, next week.